go. Assalamualaikum. Hello and welcome once again listeners to our IKK UAS podcast. My name is Tengku Aisha, NIM B04198020. I'm Aisha Hana with NIM B04198030. And I'm from Uni, NIM B04198006. So we are from group 10 and this time around we'll be discussing about functional disturbance of cow's reproductive organs. Before that, how is it going, guys? We are almost at the end of semester six. Honestly, it's the most hectic sem I've ever been with all the PBL exams and also the reports. Yeah, I know. But time flies so fast and semester six is almost over. Agree. It's not veterinary medicine if it's not hectic. Do you agree? Yes. So... Uh, under this topic, we will go through few disturbances such as uh, nymphomania, silent heat, hypofunction, and anistress. But before that, may I know why is it important? I'll explain about the importance. Functional disturbances influence the cow calf malleability. It negatively affects the cow's happy herd life and dairy herd economics. It can reduce milk yield which in turn reduces calf growth and calf meaning weight, causing a delay in puberty that later affects the potential lifetime in productivity of that calf. It is a cause of cow infertility, poor herd performance, embryonic death, and inaccurate detection of mistress. These factors are known as reproductive inefficiency, which causes economic losses to the dairy industry due to prolonged calving interval, early calving of potentially used cows, reduce milk yield and overall production lifetime, and increases cost due to veterinary services. Wow, uh, that is such a very good information about uh, functional disturbance in cow's reproductive organs. <clears throat> what is any stress? Yeah, what is actually any stress? I've heard that this problem is causing a great loss to the production of cattle. Yes, uh, that is so true, Amanda. So, uh, anistress is one of the most commonly occurring reproductive problems in cattle and buffalo in certain countries such as India. It affects livestock productivity and economics to a great extent. So, what is uh, anistress? Anistress explains a condition where an animal that does not come to estrus due to inactive ovaries. So meaning that any stress is one of the causes of functional disturbance in the reproductive system. So what is the conditions that this problem that may arise? Uh, yes, uh, any stress is commonly observed in uh, post-pubertal hyphers during pregnancy, lactation, and in early postpartum period in adult animals. It can be marked by the reduction of hypothalamic GnRH content and the secretion with a consequent sharp reduction in LH and FSH secretion from the pituitary. Are there any signs that we can observe in cows that are anistress? Yes, uh, definitely. But sometimes uh, these signs doesn't appear in all anistress cases. The signs can be dryness of the mucus and a thin vaginal wall with stratified squamous epithelial cells, a few cells to several layers, thick but without chronification. Well, that is definitely an, an estrus sign. So an estrus can be categorized into two parts, right? Depending on presence or absence of corpus luteum. Maybe Hannah, you can try to explain more about that. Yeah, uh, that is correct. So from what I learned uh, in journal and also, uh, yeah, in journal especially, uh, this condition is divided into two categories. So the first category of anistress is corpus luteum presence, but only in one ovarium. It occurs due to pregnancy, corpus luteum persistent, silent heat, cystic corpus luteum, while the second category is the absence of a functional corpus luteum with small size of ovarium. 
this type of anesthesis occurs due to nutrient deficiency, cystic ovary, and also other disturbances. You see, now that I know that anesthesis can be categorized into two different parts, how about the factors of this case? Okay, so uh, basically, anesthesis is actually a multi-causative factor that associate problem by its occurrence signals the inadequate nutrition, environmental stress, uterine pathology, and improper management practice. Therefore, uh, in preventing animals from the occurrence of any stress, it is very, very important to pay attention to the management factors, abnormal transition, and uterine conditions such as endometritis. Well, thank you, Hannah. That's a very informative um, information on any stress. So, shall we move to the reproductive disturbance? Uh, maybe Nipo Minya first. Now, I'll continue the discussion with an abdominal disturbance case, which is Nipo Minya, also known as cystic ovarian degeneration, which is a form of sterility in cows. I see. Uh, Amanda, is it true that these cases is common in dairy cows? Yes, it is. Nymphomania is most common in the cows of dairy breeds. And a considerable number of cows in their best production age are slaughtered because of this. This condition has been rising rapidly since about 1950, possibly associated with the increased milk production and artificial insemination. Is there any specific signs shown by the cow with this condition? Yeah, cows with lymphomania frequently attempt to ride other cows, but refuse to stand for mounting by other cows. But these signs will vary in intensity and degree between cows and in the same cow. Other than that, most of the cows show signs like an even metal smoker, sunken or relaxed sacros dietic ligaments, thick tenacious gray to white mucus in the vagina or at the vulva, and rarely an elevated tail hip, also called the sterility hump, dislocated hips, prolapse of vagina or pelvic fracture. I see. But, uh, from what I know about this case, uh, it can be further confirmed with a rectal palpation, right? So when rectal palpation is done, may I know what characteristic can be found in cow with uh, nymphomania? Rectal palpation is one of the diagnoses that can be done for this condition. It shows a flaccid, relaxed, atonic, atrophic uterus. In a few advanced, long-standing cases, cows may have mucohydrometra with thin uterine walls, loose flaccid, elongated, broad ligaments, cysts either funcular, luteal, or luteinized present on one or both ovaries. And cysts are usually multiple. They vary in size from half an inch to three inches and persist for 10 days or more. Nymphomanic cows suffer from an anestress and a cessation of the normal estrus cycle, a lack of normal functional capacity and infertility. So what causes uh, nymphomania occurs in cows? Nymphomania is caused by a lack of or impaired release of GnRH from the hypothalamus, leading to a lack of or impaired release of LH from the anterior pituitary gland. This prevents follicles from ovulating, which later forms cysts. Follicles that fail to ovulate also leads to the absence of a functioning corpus luteum. So, is there any treatments for nymphomania? Yes, and also spontaneous recoveries occur in 50% of cows with cystic ovaries from 15 to 45 days postpartum. If not, treatment can be done by single or repeated cysts which can be done manually or by tapping with a needle. Injection of LH intramuscularly, intravenously or intrafollicularly can also be done. Progesterone or preferably progesterone plus removal of cysts to prevent and control GnRH and LH release gives a higher recovery rate. Nymphomanic cows are advised to be slaughtered for their or not rare their offsprings because of the genetic nature of Cystic ovaries in many affected cattle and cow families. Wow, that is such an interesting info about uh, nymphomania. So now, can we move on to the next topic? Sure. 
so um, from what I understand now, so reproductive uh, disturbance can be due to if there is a, a estrus or there will be no and uh, no estrus and estrus meaning. So, but for my part, uh, hypofunction of ovaries and silent heat has like various degrees of estrus. So to start, so hypofunction of ovaries, also known as a true anistress, this one we diagnose it by rectal palpation and ultrasound. The ovaries, uh, they will have no uh, corpus luteum, no uh, follicles. The ovaries have a smooth surface uh, of the large or large or normal size ovarium. This is due to the nutritional deficiency, hormonal imbalance, where there's a decrease of follicular for FSH or LH. So the goal to when we treat hypofunction of the ovary is to bring back the estrus and to induce ovulation. So we can use a hormonal therapy such as gonadotrophin, FSH, prostaglandin, which uh, can be in a preparation of CIDR. Um, we can also use PMSG. We can use Foligon, which is um, administered intramuscular, and also prostaglandin, uh, prostaglandin to alpha. And where we can also do this by improving the uh, cow's body condition score to two and above by giving a green feeds and protein constraints. So basically, uh, for to treat hypofunction of ovary, it's a very good prognosis, and but it will heal naturally, natural recovery, uh, as long as we take care of the diet. I see. So what about silent heat then? Silent heat, on the other hand, is also known as sub estrus, meaning we cannot see the estrus signs. So to refresh again. Uh, estrus signs, um, you can see them as uh, you can see them at uh, the vulva. The vulva will be red color, moist and large. And we can hear the cows vocalizing very uh, frequently during this time. But most importantly, is standing heat, like Amanda has uh, touched on uh, the, the cows humping each other or riding each other. So lack of estrus signs um, is seen even after postpartum 30 to 120 days, even though during this time, the reproductive tract is developing normally. So uh, in this case, there is presence of a corpus luteum, but it is persistent. So maybe this is also due to imbalance of hormones. So to treat this, we need to induce estrus sign. Okay, Aisha, um, may I know, is there any treatment option to cure the silent heat? Yes, we have. So in a study in Japan, they have successfully uh, treated uh, silent heat with a combination treatment of progesterone and estrogen for silent heat. Um, but why silent heat happens is basically due to lack of exercise, a high temperature, high humidity environment, dark stall, nutrition deficiency. Maybe the cow has already have a chronic disease before that, have a parasite infestation, maybe neural disease, but largely it's hormonal. See, I think right now we have already covered all the topics in the discussion, right? Yes, uh, it is. So uh, to conclude, uh, all of our discussion today, uh, the reproductive disturbance that we have discussed today are nymphomania, silent heat, hypofunction, and also an estrus. And uh, these uh, conditions are very important to be acknowledged by the veterinary students in order to detect, diagnose, treat, and also prevent this from occurring. Hmm. Yeah, so relatively students like us, yeah. So again, guys, thank you so much for being with us until the end. Thank you, listeners. So we do hope that our small discussion was beneficial. Again, see you next time. 
Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Amanda. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.